my hires. So during June um, and actually a little bit through even the holidays, um, I'm going to ask you to deal with some problem solving questions because this is something which you have to develop as a skill. Um, and if you've already got this, then excellent. But frankly, the types of questions you get asked here can be tricky and practice, practice, practice is how you get good at them. So just so you know exactly what we're looking at for the papers. So this is your question paper. You have a 120 mark paper and 85 marks plus or minus five will be KU, knowledge and understanding. 35 marks plus or minus five will be on skills. So that is a substantial proportion of the paper. You can't just let it go and say, I know my stuff, I'm fine. So your, what we mean by knowledge and understanding versus skills. So in your knowledge and understanding, you're looking for statements describing explanations, minimum 30 marks, applying knowledge and understanding to new situations, interpreting information, solving problems comes in at 30. And then you also have a whole pile of other skill sets. So planning and designing experiments, selecting information, presenting information, processing, predictions, generalizations, conclusions, evaluations, all the things that you would think of as normal science skills, but you're going to see them come up in the in the paper. Now, in particular, in the paper, you have been used to reasonably short answer questions. The most you've probably seen is a three marker. But in the higher, you will have two or three extended response questions, which will come up to 10 to 15 marks in total. And one of those will, will have like a pick either A or B kind of choice. But 10 to 15 marks in total means that you could have a 10 marker and a five, or you could have two fives, or you could have a three and a seven, you know, that kind of thing. It's difficult to, to see exactly what they're going to have. But absolutely guaranteed, you will have a five to nine marker on data handling, one large data handling question, and you'll have a five to nine marker on experimental design. So those are the types of questions that I'm going to try and take you through over the next few weeks. So last year, going back a bit, um, so just to, to kind of show where this was, so the maximum mark is 150, because um, that's taking account your assignment. Um, so you needed 127 to get the A-band 1, 105 for the A, 89 for the B, 73 for the C, 57 for the D. So if I take out the national mean for the assignment, which was 19 out of 30, because um, they scale it up, um, so that means you need out of 120 marks, this is what you would need. You would need 72% to get the A, 90% if you want an A-band one, 58% for the B, 45% for the C, and 32% got you a D. Now that was assuming that you got the average in the assignment. If your assignment is not good, then you have to do even better in the paper to, to kind of offset that. So we're gonna look at some data handling questions. And the first thing that I have to say, because this is, very much a higher thing and almost all of the higher things are going to have this higher data handling they're going to have secondary axes so what i mean by a secondary axis is this one over here so the first thing you have to do if you see anything that has this is work out where what you're reading to where so this this one on the left hand side so your kind of normal axis is the dry mass of fungus and if you look here the fungus is this line so it is these points here that you're looking at and they are reading to this side. However, the other side is the concentration of enzymes, which is this one, and you're reading to this side from this line. Now, I am not against you going in an exam with highlighters and using them so that you know which way you're looking. Um, as long as you can still see all your, your, your sets of information, that's okay. So the first question I'm gonna give you is the 2006 paper um, and this is rule one before you even get anywhere you have to actually have read through and worked out exactly what the context is and what the data is so in this case we are looking at the norway spruce evergreen species of tree with needle like leaves found in regions with extremely cold winters you're like okay so there might be a temperature question coming up the rate of photosynthesis of the species is at its maximum during spring, then decreases from June to December. 
In an investigation, a sample of one-year-old seedlings were collected in each month from June to December. So it's going to be about photosynthesis and growth. For each sample of seedlings, following measurements were made and averages calculated. You've got the dry mass of the seedlings, the dry mass of just the roots, the starch content in the needles and the sugar content in the needles. So that tells you what you're expecting to look at. OK, so here's our graphs. So what is each graph telling you is what you have to start with. So on graph one, we have the average dry mass in grams. Now, you would use dry mass because if I use wet mass, water is an issue. Some might be drier than others, some might be wetter than others. So the water weight causes problems. So we have two different lines here. This line going up here is for the whole seedlings. And this is just for the roots each month. So a sample from each month. So in June, the average dry mass of a seed was 3.6. Being careful that I know exactly what I'm doing in terms of my... Um, scale and my average mass for my roots was 1.8 yeah okay um this one so the same months notice we've got a double axis so we've got the average starch content oh sorry which is this line so that's this one here okay and it's reading to this direction and then we've also got the average sugar content which is reading onto this side and it's the dotted line. So it's this this line here and it's reading that way. OK, I'm like, OK, I know what everything is doing now. Once So rule one is the context. Rule two is the data. And then you can actually start looking at the questions. And that's what you're going to go and do.